This is Theory, and you're watching Behind the Beats. Your time is up. Your time is up. Your time is up. Talk about uh, who are your top five producers. And five are tough. Five are tough. But uh, uh, off the top, uh, Quincy Jones. Uh, incredible, incredible artist there. Um, Mad Lib, for sure. Jay Dilla. Mr. Porter. I don't know much about, but I definitely, I mean, it's such incredible music. Uh, a Q Tip. There you go. He's made some of my favorite music, period, too. Yeah. Okay. If you were locked in a room, with one MC to do a whole album, who would it be? Madly. Hey, he's, I, I suppose he's maybe more notably a, a producer, but yeah, yeah, I'd love to do an album with Madly because we work the beats and then, you know, you flip his rhymes. Yeah, yeah, that would be dope. That would be dope. That'd be an experience right there. Okay. Well, I guess it all started with, uh, with, stereo, with stereo equipment. Uh, my dad uh, was an audiophile and uh, when his equipment when he got new gear, I got his old stuff. So I was always playing around with that. And that led to just such a love of music that um, when I found myself moved overseas when I was 10 years old and kind of starving for a particular kind of music, I started making my own. I started just, uh, I guess I was experimenting with pause mix tapes first. So I had this uh, tape deck where if you had something else going into it and you pressed record, it just picked it up seamlessly. So started to make stuff back then. Then uh, Casio came out with a first sampling keyboard, had a little microphone on it. And I just knew I had plans for that some bitch. I when they got a hold of that, I knew I was gonna sample this, that. Told my parents that uh, I wanted that for Christmas. Uh, they went down to the store and uh, the guy selling it told them, told them that all the keyboards did basically the same thing. So they brought me the wrong thing home, which was this baby right here. Old crafty PSS 470. You know, wrong thing? No, it was the right thing because this keyboard, right, had a digital synthesizer and taught me the basics of synthesis, wave spectrum, modulation, attack, attack delay, all you heads out there, and you know when you dig through the menus, all those things are there. Plus, it had a drum machine. So I started, this, this, this taught me how to program drums and how to do some synth programming at a, at a real early age. And uh, this was everything. When I started DJing, I would cart this to the, the shows and I had an RCA out, so sounds that I made up myself, I'd be pumping along with the tracks and everything. Yeah, that really started building my love for actually making music. My process, you know, I, I make music a, a bunch of different ways. It depends on the day, how I'm feeling. Uh, my little girl a while ago spilt Kool-Aid into my prized piece of gear and uh, forced me to basically go into the box to start recording and producing and everything and I really never looked back. Uh, Blackberry Jones, he, he um, gave me my first copy of Reason and I never looked back <laughs> from there. You know, so I do everything in, in the box, you know. Um, I use Reason 4 and uh, if I'm working with vinyl, you know, I just basic setup, uh, you know, the 1200 and an old sampler to feed it into my system over here and uh, I go through a process, I just call it needle dropping, and I just, I got random wax from all sorts of different sources. I mean, records like this, niggas, for real, from the 80s, your boy was DJing, I was living overseas and shit. I still got classic violin stuff, and uh, it could be anything that I sample from, anything that I hear. Or it might be keyboard sounds that generate some inspiration that day, or it might be something because I felt like plucking the bass. Uh, you know, it, I, I never know. And it could start with, with anything. Usually when I get started, I might just give myself a hi-hat and start working some elements over that and try to let it grow to something. Sometimes it'll start with drums, you know, I, it's whatever I'm feeling. What music does for me is uh, it's a pure focus, you know, and all you cats know. When you're in the zone, you're gone, you know, and uh, I guess that's what I'm searching for. That's my process. I, I try to get myself into the zone with some chords that are speaking to me or some drums that are speaking to me and just let it flow from there. I wonder sometimes where it comes from. Uh, cats are so creative, you know, it's almost like we're tapped in and it just flows out. I kind of feel that's what I'm giving back. 
you know, it, I'm, I, I tap into something when I'm getting my creativity really on, you know. Yeah, that's music for me. Okay, like, the, when you sample the record, like, where do you get your drums from? Well, um, I've been building the drum library for ages, you know, kicks, hats, and snares from a million different sources. Any place I can find them. Uh, I kind of pride myself with, you know, any of my music that you listen to. I, you'll never find that I'm using the, the same snare the same way twice, or even pretty much like the same snare twice. I, I try to build a, a different sonic creation with every track, and um, I said uh, I wind up with no real signature, except that it thumps. <laughs> I always try to put that in there. Um, I collect drums from all sources, you know, uh, I'm a music fiend and you know I hear a kick that I like and it's on wax I'll grab it uh, or you know I'm uh, searching the web or, or tapping friends for you know uh, collections of, of different sounds so much is out there and besides that you know all of it really are, are Legos you know it's just a place to start because a kick I start with never stays that way a snare I start with never stays that way a hat the same thing you know so you know could be it could be just about anything you know I just got to tune it until it pleases my ear yeah uh, and the, it, you know it all jumps off depends on on which way I'm gonna go with it if um, I'm working with wax that day you know what I'm saying I drop a needle on the record right there but, but, and, uh, but before you go tell people why you have the the record player in front of the fireplace and it does <laughs> and it doesn't know well um, because uh, for nine months out of the year I don't burn a fire that's why and it's convenient because it's right next to where the chair sits next to my booty funk setup and I like that you know I suppose if I if if I burn the fireplace all the time it could live someplace else but you know a couple of two log fire you know what I'm saying that's not the sex fire you know what I'm saying I didn't make the bonfire in that joint you know what I'm saying I just put the couple of logs on the fire just <laughs> yeah just to just to add a little mood to the to the thing. Right. But yeah, that's it, because not much out of the year, I don't burn a f the, the thing, and the, the brick is good, the brick holds it up good, you know? <laughs> Got you. <laughs> anyway, you know, I'm about what's convenient for me, you know what I mean? And the, the, the system, the whole layout speaks to that. You know, it's all within hands, it's all within arm's reach, you know, I can see everything. That's how I like it. Okay. No doubt. I'm jealous of your setup, the Roddy Rod. Love that shit. <laughs> but, um, in making a beat, you know, I'll drop a needle and I'll find some things that I like. And I'm, or there's a sample with my old Booty Funk 1200 from, uh, yeah, 1990. Heard they don't even make them anymore. And this is the 1200, not the 1210, the original. So after I sample that, I get it into my program over here called Reason. And, yeah, you know, like everybody else, you know, some people, sometimes you chop samples to the nth degree. You know, all separate parts. Sometimes people let pieces run. You know, in this case, like with this song right here, we've got some pieces in the keyboard there. That speaks to me right there. So, it's time to put a dope beat on it, you know. I'll pick some drums out. It could be anything. I've got a great collection. And, uh... It starts to come together from there, but I'll drop a, a metronome on it, I'll lay a piece, and continue to build on the track. What's nice about uh, the whole reason system is you know, everything I touch shows up as an as a object I can actually move, so I can build it and then move pieces around to suit. And then we wind up with the final project. I've got uh, on my Booty Funk PC here, you know, with my Booty Funk, y'all niggas ain't seen a monitor like this in a long time. Yeah, that's the gateway, Joe, and this, that's from, uh, <laughs> you know, fuck it. I use equipment till it breaks. What? <laughs> uh, next time you see me, though, maybe I'll have a, this on a, on a plasma on the wall. But it's good for now. So uh, it goes to my good old Dimension computer, and I use uh, the good old Lexicon soundboard right here to handle all my sound inboard, outboard needs. And I got the good old-fashioned AKG large diaphragm condenser mic up here so we get all the vocals anybody that's heard any package work yeah I know it looks meager but you know a lot of times you don't need a lot it's it's in the noggin you know I mix I mash I do it all uh, sitting right here that's right so you know final stage I'll export the song 
from reason. Sometimes I'll do it in pieces. Sometimes I'll two-track it. You know, whatever sounds good to me. And I use another program I've got on here called Cubase to lay the vocals and then bring the entire song together. I like it. It's all in the box. You know, it's all in one place. You know, and I get good results. Make sure the piece is there, you know. This is here are the drums. Some random hi hats there. The samples I was playing for you earlier. And some synth work down on this side right here. Yeah. And just bring it all together. Something raw for the for the hip hop heads out there. Hey, this joint's available too. Get at it. <laughs> Unlikely sources. <laughs> West, West Montgomery, somewhere over the rainbow. <laughs> Where? <laughs> Which we flipped to that. Classically trained the piano? Absolutely not. It's just all feel. I just play, I'm able, to, I guess I just play uh, what I need. Um, a touch I got from my dad, for sure. It's an organ over there from the uh, 1974, maybe. Still works. And uh, I remember watching him find his own melody on a Sunday morning. And I really didn't learn that till after he passed, which was a shame. But uh, that's what it's about, man. Anybody, if you don't play, you know, I love the pads too. Get a hold of a keyboard and just feel your way around and start to recognize your own melodies. Right? It's, it's real, really gratifying to create what you are looking to sample, you know? It's a love right there. I try to emulate what I hear in classical, any other sort of uh, records. This little piano line that's running right here with a nice concert piano, nice touch on the, on the, um, attack of it. It can speak a lot to you, you know. <laughs> 